Good afternoon students, I, Dr. Vishali Anshuman Zamdade, reader in Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. Today, we will going to discuss a topic, pre-prosthetic surgery. Now see, many a time it happens, either prostho peoples or the patient by itself come to the oral surgery department for extraction. Of when you are going for extraction, when you are extracting the tooth, after extraction, you are supposed to feel the bone. If it is smooth, it's okay. But if any bone is peculiar, are there, you are supposed to fi find it out. If you leave it like that only, so what will happen after 8 days? At the time of extraction, you give the antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, patient won't complain of pain and anything. But after 7 to 15 days, patient will come with a severe pain. What does it indicate? It indicates that the spicule which you had left over, that causing a pain to the patient. So this type of things. When the pe prostho peoples are going, going to give the denture or any prosthetic prosthosis to the patient, that time what happens? This spicule can cause a pain to the patient. So to avoid that, what we are going to do? We will go, we will give the incision in that area and we will reduce that spicule. So what this surgical procedures are said to be? These procedures are the pre-prosthetic surgical procedures. What does it mean? See, pre-prosthetic surgery is the procedure which is carried out on the hard tissue or the soft tissue and uh, to remove all these problems or the up, uh, what to say protuberance of the bone and the pathology which are present on the bony or the hard tissue or the soft tissue to gain the retention and the stability for the prosthesis. So how we will proceed for that? So these are the various procedures which are carried out. See for first is the alveoloplasty, second is the ref refreshing the alveolar ridge, then removal of the undercuts or the reduction reduction of the tub uh, tuberosity, removal of the pathology, uh, uh, multiple things are there. But one by one we will go to the procedures. See now, what is primary alveoloplasty? What does it mean? Just now I had explained you, whenever you are going for extraction, after extraction, immediately at that, that time only we will go for the uh, smoothing of the alveolar spicules. It is said to be the primary alveoloplasty. See, in this what happened now, we are, take, we are doing the surgical procedures, but it is very conservative. After, we are not reflecting the flap, just after extraction, wherever you are getting the spicules, you are smoothing it, either with the files, most probably we are using the files only, then bone files. After smoothing that, we used to closure, we will do the closure with the help of the sutures and all. Next, see, in this, there is no any... Uh, it is a very uh, conservative procedure and there is no bleeding, is, uh, bleeding was not that much and sometimes it happens we have to do the closure with the primary closures we have to do. Next is a sim uh, this is a simple uh, alveoloplasty, what is the meaning of simple alveoloplasty? In this what we will do at the time of extraction, I will sh show the pics, it is the same thing what I had showed you now, what I had explained you, when the patient is coming with that you, with a complaint of pain, that indicates that spicules are there. That spicules are hindering for the, uh, what to say, for the primary uh, healings. So the, with this complaint when the patients are coming towards you, what you will do, see. In this simple alveoloplasty, you will give the crystal incision. Before this, what I want to tell you, see, pre-prosthetic surgery is... Uh, Initially, it was not there. Means initially, uh, one uh, American scientist was, uh, American dentist was there. He had first uh, given attention towards the full mouth preparation before giving the prosthesis. Again, another then in 1876, he had invented. He has also uh, means he had also uh, asked us to see in the oral cavity before giving the prosthesis if any tuber if any protuberance are there on the alveolar ridge, you have to remove it out because this will cause an hindrance to give the prosthesis. In, first, say, uh, in the first picture, you are giving the crystal incision. After giving the crystal incision, you have to reflect the soft tissue. After reflecting the soft tissue, you will feel the bony pr protuberance or the spicules that you have to smoothen out with the help of filers. 
if c if the protuberance is very big or the large uh, tissue is left or the bony spicules is big in size that time we can use the uh, rotary instruments also and then this is the primary closure this is this is the picture uh, this is the uh, clinical picture of a patient you also see the all the protuberance are there which we had given the crystal incisions after that we had reflected the uh, tissue then we had gone uh, then we had done the filing here you had using uh, the rotary instrument here you had done the filing and this is the closure of the tissue now the interceptal alveoloplasty here what we used to do in this what in the simple alveoloplasty we had just given the incision we had smoothened the uh, fire uh, tuber uh, uh, bony protuberance that's it but in this what we are doing we are in interceptal alveoloplasty we are reflecting we are not reflecting the soft tissue that much then we will give the uh, incision means we are just removing or we are giving the uh, we are cutting or the we are uh, reducing the interceptal bone why we are doing all these things to gain the uh, what to say we, uh, if it is most probably have taken uh, we, we are doing all these things when when the bony more pro protuberance are there that times we have to decrease the width of the alveolo alveolus that time we are uh, we are doing all these things see one thing is there uh, whenever you are reflecting the soft tissue that time what happens the uh, bone resorption takes place most of the time when the periosteum is separated from the bone the bone resorption takes place this resorption of the bone is taking place in two phases one is the resorption of the bundle bone and another phase is the deposition of the uh, cancellous bone now what happened woven bone what happened this procedure is carried out in the uh, normal way in all the patients but in case of edentulous patient or the as we grow elder what happens the blood supply to the bone is reduced and so the physiological procedure is also very less and so that's why deposition is very less so in case of uh, oh, uh, geriatric patient what happened this deposition takes place very slowly and that's why the bone resorption is the procedure which is uh, is a phenomena or the process which is irreversible C chronic irreversible and cumulative once it start it won't stop so it again if the patient is having some pathological features like if the patient is suffering from the periodontitis so in this case also the bone resorption is tremendous so in such situation we cannot give the prosthesis how the the prosthesis people can give the prosthesis because it required retention and stability how that patient will uh, how that resorbed bone will give the stability to the prosthesis so for that thing we are following the pre prosthetical uh, pre prosthetic surgical procedures and this also what we are doing we are uh, collapsing the uh, uh, what to say buccal plate towards the lingual side here we are doing all these things by cutting the interdental bones either by bur or by ronger and then we are again filing it see in this procedure uh, in this in this you can see the buccal cortical plate is fused towards the lingual cortical plates that that means what if the patient's uh, uh, what to say maxilla or mandible is uh, like proclaimed we are uh, we are inserting it inside clear this after doing all this thing this is the closure last picture is showing the closure now this is the intercortical alveoloplasty in this what happened now in initially what we had done we had done we had given the incision with we, we had cut the bone in the interceptal region here what we are doing we are giving the incision in here canine region both the side in the canine region we are giving the vertical incision now also what we are doing we are not reflecting the flap too much just little why because once you'll reflect the flap once we'll separate the bone from the periosteum again the bone resorption will take place and that that we don't want so that's what what we'll do we'll just reflect little incision we'll give in the canine region both the side then after you'll so you'll fracture that cortical buccal cortical plate and you'll compress it towards the lingual plate but if it will won't if sometime it happens it won't uh, work or sometime it fails so what you'll do you can use the chisel or you can use the bur also after after doing this you can compress this towards the lingual cortical plate and then you can give the suture then secondary alveoloplasty is the alveoloplasty which is uh, uh, which is done while uh, while the prosthesis has been given 
this procedure is uh, carried on if the patient had come along uh, with the complaint of the pain what what we had initially discussed now the remaining slides or the remaining topic will continue in the next lecture thank